Good evening and welcome to Kansas City Ballet's first dancer chat in our series of chats this season. I am April Berry, Kansas City Ballet's Director of Community Engagement and Education. This evening's 45 minute chat is focused on the ballet Giselle. Three Kansas City Ballet company dancers who will be performing various roles in KCB artistic director Devin Carney's staging of the classic romantic ballet Giselle. We'll be chatting with guest moderator, Mary Wood. We are delighted to have Mary in the Zoom room tonight moderating this chat. A bit about Mary. Mary Bird Rood Wood is a native of Washington State, received her BFA from the University of Utah and performed with Ballet West for nine years under the artistic directorship of William Christensen. After relocating to San Francisco in 1975, she taught children and adults ballet technique and ballet history at San Francisco Ballet School. She was San Francisco Ballet's principal lecturer during the 1980s and has moderated their points of view programs since 1986 and their meet the artist interviews since 1995. She lives in San Francisco with her husband, Lance Wood and her son, Christopher Rood is a colleague of ours here serving as second company manager and rehearsal director for Kansas City Ballet. Welcome, Mary. Well, thank you, April, and good evening, everyone. It's such a great pleasure for me to be here with you all and to be in conversation with these members of the Kansas City Ballet Company. Each of these artists is preparing to perform a role for the first time, and I'm looking forward to uh, hearing how that's going. I have with me Emily Mistretta. Emily will be performing the title role of Giselle in the upcoming production. She joined KCB in 2016 after 10 years at Boston Ballet and has danced featured parts in a wide range of classical, neoclassical, and contemporary works. And Emily is also producing notable works of choreography, I hear. Whitney Hewell. Whitney came to KCB from Ballet West, so we have that in common, um, in 2014. And she also has a varied repertoire of contemporary neoclassical and classical roles. Uh, in January of 2011, she was one of Dance Magazine's top 25 to watch. And Whitney is taking on the awesome role of Myrta, the Queen of the Willies. And Cameron Thomas. Cameron has risen through the ranks, entering through KCB's second company in 2016. In addition to dancing, he plays the piano and he choreographs. Mm -hmm. You may have seen his work during pandemic times when the theaters were shut down. <laughs> And we'll see him this season as Hilarion. So I'd like to lay some groundwork or set some context for this discussion about the characters our dancing, dancers are portraying. <clears throat> when we talk about the ballet Giselle, we're referring to a pretty universal favorite in the canon with a career defining role for a ballerina. It's unquestionably the greatest ballet of the Romantic era as part of a contemporary repertoire, it challenges a company's grasp of historic classical style. It demands a highly disciplined corps de ballet. It offers several solo artists the opportunity to portray dramatic and dancing supporting roles. <clears throat> and it offers three principal dancers exceedingly difficult roles, both technically and dramatically. So breaking down those statements, romanticism, early in the 19th century, there arose the romantic movement in literature and art and music. Romanticism was concerned with emotion rather than reason, atmosphere rather than form. The dominant overarching theme was the pursuit of an unattainable ideal. And romanticism includes a preoccupation with death and dying and by extension with the supernatural, the spirits which inhabit the world on the other side. And there we see them. Played out in Giselle, we have the pursuit of an unattainable love and the power of transcendent love and 
quite distinctively, we have the element of the supernatural. The ballet premiered in 1841 at the Paris Opera, choreographed by the ballet master Jean Carali, with all of the dances for the lead character, Giselle, created by her life partner, Jules Perrault. The music was composed by Adolphe Adam. The ballet traveled, as ballets did, to Russia, where several versions were produced over time by Marius Petipa, and it's his hand that we see predominantly now. So here's the basic story. The setting is a Germanic village sometime in the historic past. A charming village girl, Giselle, is being wooed by a mysterious stranger staying in a nearby cottage. In the course of the action, we learn that another villager, Hilarion, is also in love with Giselle. Then we learn that the stranger is, in fact, the noble, Count Albrecht, betrothed to a noblewoman, Batilda. When this is revealed to Giselle, her heart is broken and she loses her mind and she dies. In the second act, we are near Giselle's grave out in the forest and we meet the willies, the spirits of women who have died heartbroken, possibly on the eve of their wedding, led by their queen, Myrta. They understandably hate men and it's their practice to kill any man who encounters them in the forest at night. Giselle is being initiated as a willy. First, her grieving beau, Hilarion, wanders into the forest toward her grave, but is caught by the willies and sent to his death. You're looking at an image now of Whitney as the queen of the willies and the willies in their dance in the forest glade. Um, did I say Giselle is being initiated as a willy? <clears throat> First, her grieving beau, Hilarion, wanders into the forest toward her grave, but is caught by the willies and sent to his death. Then Albrecht appears. He seems grieving and contrite, and her spirit appears to him. And of course, they're caught by the willies, and Myrta commands him to dance until he dies. Giselle intervenes and through her own dancing manages to keep him alive until dawn when the willies lose their power. In the ultimate romantic ballet resolution, her love has transcended death and he is saved. It's a fabulous picture of Emily with her Albrecht in that moment. Of the hundreds of ballets produced during the romantic period, Giselle has endured as a classic because of the blend of heartbreaking tragic story, lovely music, and the dancing, a choreographic design that has more or less been handed down fairly faithfully over the generations. So Giselle is about love and betrayal and forgiveness and redemption. So this is what is challenging our dancers, and I'd like to start with a sort of icebreaker question for each of them. We'll go around the room. <clears throat> Your first memory of the Ballet Giselle, the first time you encountered the work, whether it was a performance or a video or a uh, conversation, but that first entering your life. Um, let's start with you, Emily. What do you think about that? Um, but I actually saw Giselle when I was pretty young the, for the first time. Um, I was part of an academy that had a small um, company affiliated with it in California, um, like a regional local company, and they put on Giselle. Um, and I remember really being, I was impressed by the whole thing, by not just Giselle, by, by the Willies um, and the whole production. Um, so that image has always stuck with me. And I think probably when I saw that dancer do Giselle, I was like, I want to do that role someday. <laughs> yeah, it was very impactful. You have danced, have you danced the in the ballet since then? Have you had an opportunity to dance it in a professional setting? And yeah, both yes, I danced, um, I actually danced it with that company. And um, I also danced it with Boston Ballet. Um, so I got to be on stage with some pretty amazing ballet dancers and witnessed their mad scene and uh, was willing myself. And um, yeah, 
I haven't done it in a long time though. We did it very early on in my career at Boston. Um, so it, it's taken quite a few years to finally get to revisit it. So that'll be an interesting, I'll, I'll ask you a little more about that in a bit. Mm -hmm. um, let's move on to Whitney, same question. What was your very first encounter with the ballet Giselle? Um, it was a video actually, and it was at my first studio um, where I was training and I was very young. And this was actually before I knew that um, being a professional dancer was a job. So my teacher put on a video of Giselle and I'm seeing all these grown women like, you know, performing. And I was like, wow, this is like adults can do this. So that was my first impression of actually knowing that I could do this for longer than being a child, like, you know, dance longer. And I was really captivated with, it was like a willy scene. It was like act two um, that I saw. And I loved the costumes. Um, and that's what it really fascinated me. Have you danced in, we saw that picture of you, so we know that you danced it um, a few years ago at Kansas City Ballet. Uh, have you danced in any other productions since then? No, um, my whole yeah. seven years at Ballet West, they never did Giselle. So my first time doing it was my first season here with KCB. And I was a willy, I was a friend, and I did Moina. And just for the audience, Moina is she's like one of the there's two like assistants I guess to Mirta um and I was the one of one of them the I really enjoyed that role as well yeah for lieutenants yeah. <laughs> right um and those are challenging roles as I recall um Cameron your first intersection with the ballet Giselle uh, mine was a video as well in my very first school, which was through a gymnastics center. Before I started training seriously, I was in gymnastics. I was 10 years old, so not taking much of anything very seriously and definitely not taking dance seriously or thinking about it seriously. But as part of, instead of doing a class, I don't know, maybe the teacher didn't want to do class or something, they just showed us act two of the Barishnikov Makarova Giselle. And I remember specifically, like Torjate was a really big step for me at the time. It was like the only jump across the floor that I was able to do. And in the Albert Grace, in the second act, there's a double roll tie to the back, which you throw the same leg as a Torjate and you land on the same leg as a Torjate, but there's an extra rotation, totally different jump, but looks somewhat like a Torjate. And Bershnikov's going around an extra time, and it still blows my mind to this day how well he did it. But back then, I mean, forget about it. It was, that was it. Oh, wow. So have you had the opportunity to perform Giselle ever? Uh, very recently as a, a guest artist with the school not far from here, Luke Luzica was a former dancer with the Kansas City Ballet and he invited myself and uh, Gavin Abercrombie who was performing Albrecht to do, Gavin was Albrecht and I was Valerian in, in that school's production. And that was just this past summer. So it was actually kind of an interesting little precursor to, to doing the full version with the with the company. Sort of gets the music into your nervous system. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I'm going to come back um, with to ask each of you basically another similar question. But the um, the question I'm going to start with for Emily. The ballet is, after all, called Giselle because Giselle is the central character. It's her story. Um, so tell us a little bit about as you've been working into um, the role, as you've been working on the fact that this is something that you will perform as a classical dancer. Who is Giselle? What's your understanding of this character? Maybe her backstory. Um, yeah, Giselle. Giselle, I mean, she goes on such a roller coaster in this um, ballet. Um, but initially, she's she's kind of young and naive, um, but she's very joyful and um, she's innocent and she loves to dance. Um, but she's always kind of had a weak heart, so she's never really gotten to do it as much as she wants to. Um, and that's kind of her her backstory. She's she's young and she's just starting out in her life. Um, and then I don't know if I should go into what happens to her. Oh, sure. Yeah, she um, but she she just goes on such an arc because she starts out kind of 
fresh and green. Um, and she has a crush on Albrecht. Um, and she falls for him totally because she's just, she's smitten. Uh, and through this experience with him, she becomes completely heartbroken. Um, and also she's, she's kind of weak. She's a little bit sickly. So she, through her heartbreak, she, she starts to lose her mind. Um, and she eventually dies of a broken heart. Um, so then when you get into the second act, it, she's a very different character than when you first step out onto the stage. Um, she's, there's so much sorrow uh, and a weightedness to her, her, her mourning. Uh, but she's also this ethereal ghost. So it's just kind of amazing that one character can feel so many things. Um, yeah, and, and ultimately in the end, she's, she's basically full of love still. So she still kind of has a full circle, even though she's a very different version of herself at the end of the ballet. So say something about how challenging going from innocent and joyful, um, unaware, mm. to heartbroken. And that, that mad scene is, of course, I try not to use the word often, but iconic. It is, it is considered the, like Hamlet in Shakespeare, the role of Giselle in this ballet. So tell us about how you managed to go from aspect to aspect and maybe a few words about your preparation for actually getting into this character. Yeah, I think, you know, it's such a challenge. Um, she, I think it's so helpful if you kind of try and each time it's different, you really try and let the story guide you as if you don't know what's happening so if I really try to commit in the moment to who I am right then even though you already know the story you already know what your character is about to go through but you're trying to really be her in that moment and then the supporting characters help you as well the more you can utilize them the more you can use Hilarion or Batilde coming in and watching the betrayal unfold in front of your face helps me believe it's real. Um, so I think a big part is just committing to the story and relying on it in the moment as opposed to kind of thinking of it ahead of time. That being said, you're doing so much preparation ahead of time in those moments. So you're trying to find that authenticity um, so that when you get there, you can be spontaneous with it. You've, you've tried these different versions or these different options in your character. Um, but yeah, I think just in terms of the preparation so much with coaching, um, and pulling on memories from other ballerinas I've watched do this role, uh, I'm watching, sorry. yeah. Excuse me. I, sorry to interrupt. I was just going to point to the image that we were just looking at which um, showed you with a coach. And mm -hmm. I was hoping you'd say a little bit about that. Yeah, that was Elaine Bauer and she came in and um, it's, we've been through such a process because Devin Carney set the ballet and he gave us so much insight. And then we also had um, our ballet masters, Christine Parrish giving their tidbits because everyone's kind of done different versions of this. So you're kind of taking in all this different information and trying to absorb it um, and find what works for you. Uh, and then Elaine came in and kind of shifted everything all over again, but it's kind of an incredible process because we've started the process and you've, I've watched myself transform. I've watched my fellow artists transform with all the new information that comes in. Um, and it's just continues to grow. Um, and Elaine said such a cool thing, you know, with us, with the mad scene in particular, she said she definitely doesn't want it to be ready until we hit the stage. So she kept telling us to try things and have them fail and see, oh, that felt kind of weird in that moment, or that didn't feel real, or that's not reading. Um, and she was like, you can't, you can't get there 
before you're ready. So don't do that. Don't try and have, have it be bad for a while before you can like really let it go. That's fascinating. I don't know that I've ever heard that particular angle. Yeah. Um, I'm going to uh, come back to you with some other things, but right now I want to move to um, Whitney. Similar question. Um, who is Myrta? A little bit, maybe her backstory, whether you've made it up for yourself or learned it um, and her, her, her power, what is her role in the story? Yeah, well, for me, Myrta, she's been heartbroken too. And so when she was heartbroken, I think that instead of, you know, maybe forgiving or anything like that, she has become very um, vengeful. So she, she wants to take, she wants justice and she wants to take her vengeance out on, I guess, any man that comes in this graveyard. <laughs> so um, for me, I've really been focusing on like unwavering, um, like icy coldness and not, um, you know, no mercy basically is kind of what I've been trying to to get into, um, which is kind of hard for me because I'm kind of a peppy person and happy and I love all of the steps in this um, role. I love to jump. Ronda Allegro is my favorite. And a lot of times in rehearsal, um, Christy would catch me smiling because I enjoy doing the steps. <laughs> and so I had to like, you know, get it together and, and really focus on, on, the, on the character, not just how happy the steps make me feel. So that was um, kind of an arc that I had to kind of get through. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's really helpful to, to just remember why she's, she's so cold and icy. It's because she was hurt and that's how she, um, she deals with the pain. And then she brings in these other uh, ladies that were, you know, either jilted or just, you know, some man did them wrong. And um, this is how they have become strong is by killing men. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and it's very effective. Those scenes are just awesome, spine chilling if they're done well. Um, the um, technical difficulty, and you just addressed that when you referred to you love doing what we in the ballet world call Grand Allegro, the big jumps. Um, and so you're definitely in your comfort zone doing this. Um, what is the... Um, see how to, how does Mirta turn the plot like where what is her dramatic reason um I feel like she's dancing to show her strength like to show that she's in charge and she's all she's powerful um and so I feel like as far as the plot it's like it's gonna be this way there's no other option than for you to dance until you die is basically what she's saying um and it throws her for a loop a little bit when Giselle comes in and then she's like pleading um for that not to happen um and you know she still tries to make it happen um but yeah I think you know that's just always been the way things have been so it's it's a little um strange for her to have anybody question what should should and has been happening, you know, whenever a man comes into their mist. I want to take a moment to just welcome anyone who joined us late. Um, I'm Mary Wood, and I'm in conversation with Emily Mistretta and Whitney Hewell and um, Cameron Thomas, who are dancers with the Kansas City Ballet, who are preparing roles for the ballet Giselle, which will be opening very soon. <clears throat> Excuse me chance for me to clear my throat too. Um, Cameron, let's move on to the role of Hilarion. And wh who is Hilarion? And then how does he affect the plot? So Hilarion, especially at the beginning of the story, is a very grounded person from a lot of our coaches, Elaine Bauer and Devin and our artistic staff. The words they've been using are of the earth, and that can be taken in a very figurative sense, but also in a very literal sense. Hilarion's first entrance, he carries a hunting knife. He has game that he's hunted for Giselle. He has a flower that he's grown and picked for Giselle. He's in love with Giselle. He is a person of structure and of routine, and he expects to 
be with Giselle and with her family and, and to keep his life as it has been going. So all the more the reason for his jealousy and anger when he discovers that Giselle's fallen in love with someone else. And then even further, when this someone else is not who he says he is. And that's kind of what I think makes Hilarion a very interesting character is because it's part of what drives the story forward are his jealousy and his anger towards Albrecht and his confusion and sort of unwanted advance toward Giselle, which casts him in a really negative light. He's, he's really not only overstepping his relationship with Giselle, but also escalating the situation with Albrecht to a point where it drives Giselle mad and breaks her heart. But then you really see him as somewhat sympathetic in that the anger is, is righteous because while Albrecht is in love with Giselle, he's also a liar. He's not who he says he is and he's misrepresenting himself. And then so for ultimately Hilarion to be the one to die, I think that's really one of the things that makes Giselle such an amazing story is that there's depth and, and layers to the characters is that yes, Hilarion is, is jealous and is angry and is Un, and is confused to the point of being unwilling to accept the situation, but he also is sympathetic for a lot of reasons that are justified. And his death and his relationship to Albrecht and Giselle are complicated. And I think that's part of what makes the ballet and the character especially really interesting to portray. So he's neither, uh, he's not really a villain. That's a, that's a complicated question. Because he breaks up Albrecht and Giselle and Giselle dies ultimately because he's escalating the situation with Albrecht. But no, I don't think he's, I don't see him as a pure villain. Certainly not. Now, one of the questions I'd like to um, go back to, go back around the circle. Um, I can't remember if one of you referred to watching other dancers, watching videos. And this has to do with your preparation for doing the roles that you're preparing. Um, how influenced are you by other interpretations? And we'll go back and start with Emily. Um, I, I have not watched too many videos um, almost because I don't, I don't wanna try and emulate something too much or also get intimidated by there's so many incredible versions. So. I think I'm trying to pull on the people that I've worked with that I've witnessed do this role um, more so. Uh, but I think you, I think you do you, when you're dancing and you, especially if you've gotten to be a part of the production before you kind of, you get to watch and you get to see who was, how was, what was your favorite part or what, what really stuck with you when this dancer did that. Um, so yeah, I think I think I'm definitely pulling on that, but a lot of my preparation is also just spent um, internally and also just uh, by myself in the mirror uh, to really kind of see what will read for me specifically is probably different than what will read for somebody else. Um, it's a very individual ballet that way. Um, and it's, in particular, the mad scene, you really have to kind of, um, go to a dark room by yourself and figure out where you want to go with that scene. That's an interesting image. I'm imagining dark closets in your various homes <laughs> going mad. Um, there are many, there are certainly many stories about the ballerinas through history uh, working on the mad scene and their different interpretations. It's quite something to look up someday yeah. when you got your feet up. Yeah. Um, Whitney, I think you mentioned something about um, watching others um, interpret the role. What sort of input can you talk about? Um, well, I've watched a few things on, on YouTube, but the choreography is very different. 
Um, so I mainly look um, for like the bores, like the opening section when Mircha comes out and she's like, basically, she's like a ghost and she goes across. And so I thought it would be effective to see different dancers do that opening um, part. And that was actually very helpful for me, for me to figure out like what look I'm going for when I go across. Like basically you just wanna like wisp by. Um, so that was helpful, but um, I've been looking a lot at the um, 2015, um videos for of kcb and the mirtas that did it last time um were uh danielle bowsinger and Ang angelina sansone and so i was watching them a lot um as well and in their interpretation of it but mainly like emily said i feel like it's about um what you can bring to the role so that's um what i've been focusing on mostly Cameron, you mentioned um, the fact that you actually had the opportunity to perform the role, <clears throat> but it was in someone else's production. It was. Um, it'd be interesting to hear about, uh, I don't know, input from different coaches, different teachers that might, uh, that you can knit together or make choices from. Oh, definitely. I think similar to what Emily was saying and what Whitney said as well, a lot of doing the role honestly is is i think more so than emulating someone else is really developing an understanding of your motivations what you're trying to say and how you're trying to say it and then doing and then just had that coming from within once you have an understanding and so i think there is a lot of parallels in that sense between when i did it as a guest with this ballet school and now with kansas city ballet is because a lot of the process was, here's what you're trying to say. And then we go from there. Either I will do something or they will suggest something and then we pick and refine and adjust as to how it reads best on me. And, and that has been a very similar coaching process really with uh, the directors of that school and now with Devin and with Elaine Bauer and with our artistic staff. So it, it actually has been a somewhat similar experience even though the versions were very different. Um, some of the interactions, the steps, the, the mechanics are, are very different, but the intention, motivation, the dialogue, so to speak, is actually the, almost exactly the same. I know that Hilarion is primarily a dramatic role. Um, addressing both Emily and Whitney, you've talked a lot and I've asked you to talk a lot about the drama and the character. But we're also talking about entering a style that, let's say your last ballet was um, something very contemporary, and then you did something Balanchinian, and now you're being asked to do something that originated, originated in 1841. What sort of things are you having to do to make the audience understand this romantic era? Let's start with you, Emily. Arms, yeah. Shoulders, heads. Yeah, it's such a good question. Um, Giselle is so it's so stylized. It's so it's so different than an, a a different classical ballet. Um, there's such a there's such a depth in the movement. Um, the port de bras in particular is everything is so it's so purposeful and so um, there's so much intention behind it. So it's that. It's almost like how you would approach a contemporary ballet in a way, um, even though it's very classical and the technique is its own difficulty, but it's it's a whole, completely different animal. Um, and so, yeah, it's, I would say you almost approach it in a similar way because so much for me, for me, contemporary work, uh, it's really about putting intention behind the movement so that it's not like limbs moving and there, it makes sense why you're moving your body without a story. Giselle, there's such a story, but even in just beyond the, the overarching story, there's just a story in like one port de bras. Uh, and so it's just applying that as well as doing, you know, all of the entrechats. Uh, it's, just, it's just this balance of the two. Um, and that's what's like so enjoyable about it. Every little movement is contributing to what you're saying. Um, I don't even know if that answers the question. But... Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, 
This is um, sort of out of in left field. Have you ever had the opportunity to travel to Europe, to France, and enter one of the opera houses mm -hmm. that were um, perform had performing companies in the 19th century? Um, there's something about imagining that you are one of those romantic ballerinas. Um, does that ever enter your mind? When you're um, yeah, actually, it because it, it, it feels this ballet is so special. You can feel the the longevity and the age that it's been around. So um, it has that air to it. Um, it feels like history when you're doing it. So I think, yeah, I definitely can picture that. What about you, Whitney? Talk about style, romantic style. Um, yeah, for me, I like to have my arms high. I like to have, you know, for me, I had to kind of bring it in uh, lower arms, lower shoulders, just kind of, and I think because Mirta is so cold and icy, that kind of helps me get have that kind of technique, you know, um, because she's just like stern and, you know, pretty stoic. I think that has the role itself has helped me with the technique. Um, and so that's how um, I'm doing. I think I'm doing pretty well with it. I feel more, I feel like it's more in my body. I don't have to think so much about shoulders down and like arm lower because we've been doing it a lot. Um, I feel like it's, it's pretty much in there. It's just, you know, ma mainly just like staying in, in the role itself because I feel like the technique has become part of it. Um, it's like meld together. Well, we've touched on the fact that this is such an important ballet in history. And um, it's always sort of considered the big four with Swan Lake and Sleeping Beauty and maybe Nutcracker and Giselle. They're always listed together. Um, do you want to say any final words about um, entering into performing this ballet? comparing it to maybe other experiences you've had with other classics. Um, Emily, not to, no pressure here, but this is one of the biggest roles in the whole ballet canon. And it's just so exciting to think of, of you stepping forward in it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I definitely, I definitely feel that excitement. It's been a, it's truly been a dream role of mine since I was a little, and it's my favorite of all of those ballets. But it is part of that upper echelon of like, okay, like I'm a, officially a, a professional ballet dancer if I'm doing this role, which is so silly because, you know, we've been professionals for so long, all of us. Um, but it does feel very important. It feels like a big marker in my career. Um, and yeah, I've just, I've, I've always wanted to do it. Um, so it's really special to get to have the opportunity to do it. <laughs> See. <laughs> Whitney, musings? Um, yes, it's it's definitely like a bucket list role. Um, I've always liked um, Mirta. I, I love, you know, I, like I said, I love to jump um, and turn. And so it kind of, it's very similar to, for me to something I've done in the past of the Paquita variation, the one with all the um, soda shots in it. It kind of has that dynamic, but also mixed with like sort of like a sugar plum because you do all the bores and things like that. So it's like a, it's like if I were to compare it to two things that I've done, it would be those two roles mixed together. Um, and I'm really excited to perform it. Interesting because Paquita comes from another whole part of the classic ballet tradition. Um, Cameron, do you have any thoughts about? just th this place in history. Um, well, talking about Giselle relative to the other ballets that you mentioned, I also prefer it of, of all those ballets just because it it has such a personal story and it, it has, in my opinion, just the best story of all of those ballets. It's so compelling. The characters are so rich and there are really no moments in the ballet that don't serve the greater narrative and I think as someone I've gotten to play a lot of characters in my career so far which is really exciting I played Ralph Bard in Swan Lake 
I do draw some Meyer a lot. And so as someone who loves bringing character into roles and, and really diving into a role and, and telling stories through ballet, through, through mime, there's really not much of a better opportunity to do it than in Giselle and in, in Hilaria. So I'm really excited to do that. That's really exciting to hear you say, and I think it's it's um, an interesting comparison possibly to uh, other character roles. This one um, is perhaps not unlike Rothbart, uh, who drives the story, but uh, this character really does uh, have such a pivotal role in, in the drama, in the storytelling. Um, we are within the the sort of four minute mark of coming to the end. And uh, other than saying this has been an absolute delight to hear each of you speak about your, a little bit about your history and about preparing the ballet Giselle and acknowledging the role that Giselle plays in, in our history. Um, I think it's so exciting that Kansas City Ballet is taking this on. Um, hate when we run out of time. I do want to say to our viewers, I hope that we'll see you at at least one and possibly more performances of Kansas City Ballet's Giselle. It's performed uh, from October 14th through the 23rd at the Kauffman Center for the Performing Arts in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, for more information, of course, you can always go to the website kcballet.org where there's information about getting tickets and you can also check the casting information which is there and if you particularly want to catch one of these dancers, then that will be your, your key to how to do that. <clears throat> Another special thanks to Emily and to Whitney and to Cameron and how wonderful it was to just hear from each of you. Um, I get the sense that you're really looking forward to these performances. That will be what the audience wants to know. Uh, thanks to the Kansas City Ballet staff who pull these online events together so smoothly. And to our audience, thanks for your participation. And we'll say good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's awesome.